Yes, you can machine quilt on a Singer Start sewing machine. You are gonna to need to purchase an optional free motion foot or darning foot, but it needs to be a low shank. Now, what does that mean? Is that we actually will not be using a snap-on style of foot, which is just attached to the ankle, but we will actually need to remove the ankle with the screwdriver. So take your screwdriver, twist it so it loosens. This screw will need to come completely out, and I wanna show you what I do with this ankle. The ankle, being that it's white, can easily be kind of misplaced. So if you reattach it to a foot, it's a lot easier to find your foot later when you're done. So there is a variety of different shapes and sizes of free motion feet. Again, low shank is what you're looking for, but they all will have some type of arm or item that will stick out. Do note that this needs to be above the screw that takes your needle in and out. So you can just go ahead and position it in place and attach the screw that you took out earlier back in. Make sure this is tightened well so it doesn't wiggle loose. Now, there is the feed dog cover plate because usually in the directions for free motion quilting, you need to lower the feed dogs, which we've talked about on this machine. It's actually a cover. So the only thing is, is that it does start to get a little tight for the fabric to move freely. Now, here's a little trick. I'm gonna actually leave this off because then I can have a little bit more freedom. I do need to be on a straight stitch so my needle is not zigzagging back and forth, unless that's the look that you're after. But if you do set the machine to the shortest stitch length, those feed dogs will move at the smallest amount versus say a longer back and forth amount. Now this foot will hover, so it's not like it's gonna really be touching the feed dogs. They are gonna move a little bit, but that's just my choice for leaving this off. Now you do notice it looks like the presser foot is down, but it's actually not. You do need to remember to lower the presser foot in place when it starts to stitch. Now one thing to actually do, and I've put on some different thread than what I have in my bob, and I actually put some variegated thread on, so we can actually see the stitching and if we need to, how to adjust the tension with this. So sometimes what you wanna do is hold this thread and then bring the bobbin thread up. Take a stitch, lift up, and pull this completely out. That's the bobbin thread from below. And then that way you just kinda have a little uh, holding onto it so you don't have to find it later and cut it away from the back of the fabric. Now, here is a little trick. So there is a fine tune level of stitching and the stitch speed and how fast you moved your fabric. So for example, if I move my fabric quickly, but I sew quickly, I can get little tiny stitches. If I don't move my hands and I slow, sew slow, those stitches get really, really big. So there is kind of a happy medium of how fast you move your fabric based on how fast you run the sewing machine. So that takes practice. That's not anything that just become, that is not like a normal, natural thing. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. So let me just stop for a second. I wanna bring the needle all the way up, lift up the presser foot and pull it out. So I can see my stitches look okay on the front, but how do they look on the back? So actually they don't look that bad. It's when I see the little dots here, that's when I might have to adjust the tension. But those dots appear when I was really moving the fabric and those stitches got long. So the more consistent you move it in a smaller range of stitch length, you will find that they'll actually be nice and smooth. Now, if you did have lots of dots on the back, then we would take and go to a higher number of tension but since this is pretty balanced, and, and that, the, the reason it's balanced is because the weight of thread I have in my needle and the weight of thread I have in my bobbin are very similar. So even though they're two different brands of thread, thickness-wise, they're, they're the same. So that's why when I sew, I don't really have to change it a lot. So if you don't remember which way to turn your tension, if you turn it one direction and it gets worse, then go the other direction. And I would always start by turning it a whole number, go from four to five or five to six, or four to three, 
and so forth. So if you just move it a little, you probably won't see a lot of difference. So let me just go ahead, I'm gonna slide it back underneath. I'm gonna lower my presser foot down and I'm gonna go ahead and do a little stitching. My thread wasn't very long, that's why I didn't actually bring it up. But this is what it will look like when you free motion quilt. I love playing with some variegated thread. It just adds a whole new element. Now, we'll put some links below this YouTube video for free motion quilting online courses that you can take through Blueprint. That is where I became a master machine quilter. Um, I know I just showed you a little bit, nothing exciting here. I just really wanted to show you, you can quilt on the Singer Start machine, what it takes to set it up, and which foot you'll be using.